Five tips to help you MIG weld thin wall square tubing. Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're looking at some 16 gauge square tubing that I'm using to put together a frame for a go-kart build that I'm doing on the channel. You'll see that coming out in a few weeks, but today we're focused in on how to get a good result when you're actually MIG welding that tubing together. I've broken it down into five tips. Let's get started with the first one, which is your fit up. Now to demonstrate the things we're talking about today, I've just cut some basic pieces to lay out here on the bench and notice how well this mitered corner fits together as well as this straight piece. It's worth taking a bit of extra time measuring a little more closely. It'll pay you back when you're less likely to blow holes through your project and it distorts less overall. Now tip number two is to test out your settings. You can use the chart or the built-in settings in the machine to get a baseline, but it's a good idea to go ahead and run a practice weld first. You know, I don't know any pro athletes that brag about only playing during the game. They practice all the time. We should approach our welding a little bit in the same way. At least make a quick practice run on some scrap material that's similar thickness to make sure everything's going okay. Now, if you find it challenging to actually know what knobs to turn or understand what's going on when you go to dial in your settings, I'll link a video in the description that'll be really helpful. Now, number three is understanding what type of joint you're gonna weld. So you can break most projects down in four basic types of joints. Let me go ahead and tack together these example pieces so that we can take a look at what types of joints we're looking at here. And these types of joints are the ones that you learn in each of my online courses and you practice them. First, let's look at this mitered corner. On here, there are three types of joints. On the side, there's a butt joint where the material is butted right up against one another. In that case, it's gonna be best to just drag right along and follow that seam moving at a relatively steady pace. Now, when it comes to the outside corner joint here, this is going to be the joint that's gonna be most likely to melt through on you and have problems there. Now, on this thin of material, one of the best hacks you can use is to weld vertically down. It helps you to move a little bit faster. You won't build up as much material and you're gonna penetrate in just fine for anything you're welding out of this thin material. Now, last of all is this inside corner joint where we put in a fillet weld between the two. Right here, I'm just pointed 45 degrees right into the corner of the joint and moving along with that weld puddle all the way through. Now here on the T-joint, I only have two types of welds. One of them is a butt joint and the thing that's different about this one than the other butt joint is this corner of the material is actually gonna absorb more heat than the edge of the piece that's butted up against it. So I need to focus my weld a little bit more in terms of position on that corner and then let it bridge over and consume the end that we're running into. Now, as far as the T-joint, it's basically the same as the inside corner joint just running right along there in a straight line. And at the end of the day, each of those came out really well. Now, number four is just to use good overall welding technique. Those things that I share in my basics for beginners videos and in my course, some of the elements that are most important when you're MIG welding are one, your stick out, how far your contact tip is away from your work. You wanna keep that short. You need to pay attention to your angles, both your work angle, that's relative to the two pieces that you're welding together, as well as the travel angle. You can either push or drag, but don't get carried away. 10 or 15 degrees is plenty. And last of all, your travel speed, watching that weld puddle and letting that dictate how fast you're moving to make sure that it's tied into both plates without sagging through and burning through. It's really important on this thinner material that you keep moving, but don't overdo it. Just watch that weld puddle and let that guide how fast you're moving through. Now, tip number five, this one has to do with distortion and it is sequence your welds to reduce the amount of distortion you have. That was actually my job for a while, was to figure out the best order to put different welds in really complex equipment that had over 100 welds to be able to reduce distortion. That's a story for a different day. One basic principle is gonna get you 90% of the way there, and that is remembering that these fillet welds are going to pull more than these butt joints here where you have a groove weld in it. And so when you go to weld these joints, 
it's best to weld the ones that will distort the least first. So I'll go ahead and typically weld these butt joints. It's you know a good idea to weld from the inside to the outside, but if you don't remember that, that's just fine. And then once I've welded that on both sides, I can go ahead and weld this outside corner. I could have welded that first, but it's fine to go next. And then finally weld this inside fillet weld here because I know that'll pull the most, but I already have a lot of weld in there that's gonna keep it from moving around. Just remembering that one principle, weld the fillets last because they pull the most, that's gonna help you a ton to keep your parts from warping and distorting all out of shape. So let's just recap what these five tips were. Be careful with your fit up, test your settings, make sure you know what type of joint you're running and how to run it, use good overall technique, and sequence your welds to avoid distortion. So if you do all five of those things, your welds are gonna come out pretty good when you have to MIG weld that thin walled square tubing. Hey, well, if you wanna learn more about any of these topics we've touched on today, I've linked a bunch of helpful videos down in the description below where I go a little bit deeper on some of these things. And I'll also link my online courses where you can go and I'll walk you through step-by-step -step with exercises through the learning process, everything that you need to know from the beginning, clear through to being able to competently run each of these common weld joints. Hey, thanks a ton for tuning in. Until next time, weld safe and we'll see you then.